Hello everybody, it's Adam here, coming back to you from Houdini version 14. And today we're going to make something uh, which is like cables that are conforming to not only a ground plane or a surface, but also conforming over top of one another in a stacked format. So it's kind of a weird description without a picture, but let's just get going. We're going to drop down a geometry node, go inside and throw away the file, and I'm going to paste some curves in from another project here. Um, and then I'm going to type merge. We'll merge them all together here. And I'll do spacebar 2 and we can look at them. So this is my mess of curves. And they can be polygons or nerves. It doesn't really matter. All that really matters with this system is the stacking order. So curve 1 in the merge will be at the bottom and curve six will be on top. And then uh, our for each we're going to construct a feedback mechanism. So the first one will go in by itself, the second one will have the information of the first one, and then the third one will have one and two and so on. So let's go ahead and make a group out of these curves and we'll just call them curves org. That's our original group. We'll go ahead and drop down uh, for each. And we will set it to primitive point mode. And uh, after that, we'll just delete. We don't need those curves anymore. So we will delete curves org. And then after the delete, we'll do a little bit of cleanup on this constructed geometry uh, by consolidating points, fixing overlaps. That's all we really need to do. Now to make this for each interact with a ground plane, I'm going to do spacebar 1 to return to perspective view here, we need uh, to feed that in. So let's go ahead and type a grid, lay down a grid followed by a mountain kind of uh, classic tools here that we're using. I'm going to disconnect that. I don't know why it does that. All right. So we'll just I have some magic numbers here. We'll say 75, 75 with rows and columns 300 by 300 and the mountain height of 0 0.2. And now if we visualize this, we have just kind of a soft medium density landscape that our cables are going to lay on top of. So let's uh, go ahead and jump into the for each and begin the process. So the first thing I want to lay down is the second each which is going to process our feedback section. So we activate feedback and we browse out to the for that is our self basically. And we feed that also in as our input and the mountain will be merged in and these guys are kind of irrelevant. So let's go ahead and drop down a merge. And we'll merge in the mountain and the previous curve set. And But on this side we want to resample the current curve that we're processing. We'll set this to say 5, 0 0.2, maintain last vertex, and that's good enough. We'll drop down a ray. Uh, the curve will go on the left side and the feedback on the right. So for the ray we want primitives, project rays, and then we'll right click on ray direction and delete channels. We're going to type just a 1 in the y direction because that's the way we're processing is up. Um, we will set, uh, we, we, we want to intersect with farther surfaces and we want just maybe a little smaller ray tolerance. We'll give it a little lift, 0 0.15. Uh, sample 18 should be enough, 0 0.182. Uh, and then ray combiner will be the shortest ray. So with that set up, we can go ahead and just drop down a convert. And we will convert whatever our input was is now a NURBS curve. And then we'll provide or will perform a, a final resample of with a 
much smaller length, preserve the last vertex, and we'll take a look at that. We'll turn on our points. So you can see we now have a curve with lots of density to it, but we don't really need this dense of a curve. Uh, we only really need it where it's bending. So let's play around with the refine node here. And uh, we're going to activate the second UV and make the range 0 to 1, which will be across the entire length of the curve. And we'll choose unrefine and let's visualize. As soon as we do that, we lose almost all our points except the very minimum amount to define our curve. So when we lower the tolerance, we can add um, density right where we need it. And this will be dependent upon the shape of your curve, of course. So find a setting that um, gives you more points where it's bending and, and less points where it's straight. So let's go ahead and drop down a poly frame after that. And we will change the normal name to up and the tangent name to n. And that will help us align this uh, circle that we're laying down, followed by a copy, followed by skin. So the circle on the left, right, the points on the right, and then we'll skin this and take a look. Didn't exactly work. Um, the reason it didn't work is because the circle here is still a primitive. It has no points. So as soon as we set it to polygon, we do indeed get a tube. And if you want a smoother tube, you can just up your divisions. And I'm going to set the scale to 0 0.15. And that looks good to me. That's going to be the size of our cables. So this is what we're going to feed back into each two. So let's just drop down a merge. We'll take the skin, plug that in, pull the each down, and we'll activate that. And we'll go up one level. We'll visualize the clean. And we get a jumble of points, so let's turn those off and maybe pick uh, flat wire shaded. And if we take a look, you can see now we have our cables over top of one another. And if we go ahead and merge in the mountain as well, you can see that we indeed have, let's just go ahead and drop a camera right there, we'll say, and we'll throw down environment light, ambient occlusion mode, and maybe zoom out just a little bit. We'll pop to render view here, get that thing a cooking, and uh, I like to play around with the render node just a little bit. We'll say 2, 2, 2 with ray variance off. We'll turn off this preview so that we get the final render to appear. And there you have it. We've got our cables here that are um, overlapping each other and conforming to the landscape somewhat. You'll notice there's a gap here, but it, it does pick up and conform in a general way. Um, let's go back to OBJ, press the L key, maybe go into, we'll rename Geo to Cables, dive inside, uh, lay this out, and now we see what we've got here. If we play around with, say, the mountain height, we should be able to affect a change, not only in our rendering, but the cables themselves actually bulge up a bit. You can see I'm, I'm seeing peaks here, which to me means we don't have enough resolution in our grid. And you'd think 300 by 300's got to be pretty dang big, but um, let's go ahead and say 400 by 400. And it looks like that's taking a bit longer to render and maybe under mountain we would want to change our frequency, drop it down a little bit, 0 0.7. I think a smaller frequency makes it stretch out a bit more. 
and that's kind of smoothed some of those peaks that we were seeing. And now another thing we can do here inside the for each is if we look at circle here, its radius is uniform scale. So if we copy this parameter and go back to ray and paste that as a relative reference in our lift, now when we change the size of our circle, the lift will automatically be calculated as well to lift the cables up in proportion to the size of the circle. And you can see when I did that, we're getting some render anomalies here. So uh, one thing that comes to mind is maybe we don't have enough points, so I would just turn off refine at this point and see if that does anything to fix this stuff up. And look at that, it did. By just giving it more points, we now give it uh, a better ability for Mantra to smooth it. So this is my jumbled mess of cables. Um, feel free to play along with it, play around with it, and I uh, hope you have some fun, and I'm out.